This episode is brought to you by John Blake Sales Breakthrough Solutions, helping you to at least double the amount of leads that you get that convert into paying clients. Welcome to the Master Dealmaker's Secrets Podcast. And now, here's sales growth strategist, John Blake. Okay, so I am particularly excited today because I have Ken Okazaki with me. Ken is a video marketing expert. I have been wanting to get Ken on the show for quite some time. Video is such an important part of of content. It's such an important part of the internet. It's such an important part of social media, of, of, of websites, and I'm, we're very, very lucky to have Ken with us because he has such a deep understanding of the media, uh, the production part of it, the content part of it, and I am really looking forward to asking Ken some questions and getting his input for the listeners today. So, Ken, welcome, mate. I'm so stoked to have you uh, and uh, yeah, really appreciate you being available today for us to have a chat. Thanks, John. Really glad to be here too. Awesome. So, so Ken, can you give us a little bit of, of background? I mean, you, you, um, I, I know that you're from Japan. Um, I know that your English is incredible for um, someone who speaks English as a second language. <laughs> um, can you give us a little bit, a, a little bit of background about you, about your, you know, what's led you up until, you know, what's led Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Happy to, you know, f- first of all, yes, I am Japanese born and raised in Japan. Yeah. But uh, I think English is my stronger language simply because from a young age, my parents put me into international American school in Japan. Gotcha. And I actually, uh, at 17 years old, I, I left home and wow. uh, I traveled the world for 11 years straight. And just having that really uh, early start to like an international exposure, that's probably, uh, it's done two things for me. Number one, help me learn that English is really, really useful when you're traveling. <laughs> and number two, it's uh, give me a, a really good worldview on, on business and on just engaging with people. Uh, just, I guess entrepreneurship is about solving problems, right? And when you're 17 years old, uh, broke on the streets of of uh uh mumbai uh and trying to figure stuff out then you 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 know your problem thinking cap goes on and it gets to work right away and i applied a lot of that to entrepreneurship and and the businesses that i i run right now so was it always about video or or was it more so just about marketing in general and then you sort of found your way so before this business i was running large-scale personal development uh, seminars here in Japan. And I'm not the main speaker. I was, it was my company. I was the promoter. And what we do is uh, we'd partner with, uh, you know, world-class speakers. Uh, you know, I'll just say a few names here. So you understand the scale, uh, you know, people like Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, Nick Vujicic, Les Brown. These are like kind of well-known in the speaking industry. And I knew that if I could get these famous people on my stage in Japan, then I could fill the room. Right. Yeah. So every other month we'd, uh, we'd put it on a seminar, uh, a few thousand people, uh, you know, and, and these weren't discount tickets, front row seat is like $7,000 back rows about 700. And every other month we'd fill this stadium, right. Or, or the event hall. Mm-hmm. And, uh, after a couple of years of doing this, you know, we were actually producing the largest personal development events in Japan. But I, I really hated it. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it. You know, running these events is a headache. There is putting there bums is on so seats, much, right? Yeah the the logistics behind you know ticket sales, promoting, running the events, the staff, the the some of the speakers with really big egos, and and <laughs> and I'm here, the organizer, trying to keep everything happy, everybody happy, and and the, the business running. So, you know, eventually I, I decided I want to get out of the business and, uh, and the thing that I, it, oh, quick story, I, I had a, you know, a little bit of money because, you know, I was exiting this business and I, I wanted to build a new business that I really loved. And I, instead of thinking, what can I do? The, the way I went about it was to think about what do I want in my life? Right. And I came up with five things that I loved. Mm-hmm. I love number one, uh, 
being having access to world class influencers, right? Just being able to get on a call with them, whether it's in business or otherwise, right? Uh, the second thing I wanted was to uh, just have freedom to travel wherever I want in the world. Uh, the third one, I want to spend more time with my family, uh, my wife and kids. Uh, fourth one is I wanted to do something with cameras because I'm Japanese. I can't help it, you know, it's, it's in my <laughs> genetics, right? And number five, I wanted to make sure that this wasn't a, a financial roller coaster every every single month, because uh, in the events business, it's you know eighteen months in advance. You're putting down a deposit for the for the hall. You're paying these speakers. Some of these speakers literally are over a million dollars for them to show their face on my stage, and I gotta put all this money out before I start selling tickets. And it is it is a stressful situation to be in. And because I got to commit 18 months in advance, I've got uh, all these overlapping campaigns and I'm like digging a hole within a hole within a hole and then trying to dig out. But then I got to keep this cycle going in order to keep selling more. Mm. So that wasn't fun. So I wanted a business where I'm cash positive every single month. So with these five non-negotiables, uh, I created a, a video marketing company and I approached some of my the speakers who spoke on my stage and said, hey, you know how I filled that room for you? Mm -hmm. um, how about I help you do that globally by producing great content, just like I did in Japan, but we'll do it in English. And uh, how about I help you? I know you're busy. So once a year, we'll spend two days and we'll shoot all your content for the entire year. And we're going to help you plan it. We're going to direct it. We're going to edit it. We're going to get it out for you. And uh, we'll spend two days. It's going to be a lot of fun. And that's going to be enough content for the whole year. And they just like signed me up. So that's how I started this agency. So in order to, for me to be able to, uh, to travel, which I love doing, I rent these luxury locations in, I did London, I did LA, I did San Diego, I did, uh, New York, uh, I, Tokyo, like places I want to be. I set it up like a reality TV show set, eight different sets, eight different locations, costume change, makeup artists, you know, catering the whole deal. Uh, a full film crew, and then they'd show up, they'd feel like a rock star, right? And we just shoot, shoot, shoot all day and get them out. So that was my initial foray into video marketing is hmm. planning, directing, shooting, uh, social media marketing content, and then uh, having team take care of the rest, uh, editing, repurposing, and distribution. So I don't know, is that too much detail or, or not enough? No, no, no. <laughs> right, that's, that, that's perfect. Yeah, so that's how I got into it. Uh, I went in with a marketing mind because this is what I was doing for to fill my rooms. And I know that these guys speak all over the world. And if they could run their own events, I know they're making a lot more money and they, they like that, right? So uh, that's that's how I got into this. Now, obviously, since COVID, we're not doing the traveling thing. So I had to reinvent my model. And now we do similar things, but it's more on a monthly recurring retainer model where we help people set up their home studios we, if they need it, uh, not all of them do, but if they do, we give them coaching around content creation. Sometimes we actually live direct over Zoom and we help them create content to market their business. You know, whether it's coaching, um, we have some people in the medical industry, fitness industry, it's all over the place, but uh, it's, it's really, if you see a path for social media to generate the leads for your business, then video is probably the best way to do it. Awesome. So, so there was a, a couple of, of step off points from, from, from obviously your, your background, what you do right now, I totally get the whole wanting to not want to stay in the events thing, because it's just the whole bums on seats thing. It's so stressful. Like I've got a, you know, I've, I've had a little bit of exposure to that one particular guy who I won't name, um, who is paying like a, a, a a superstar, like I think he writes out a check to get this guy to fly to Australia for like two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, and that's before he's even sold a ticket. Yep. So then he's just got to chew. You know, it's like you know, bite off as much as you can chew, and then just chew like hell to try and make this thing break even. And there's no guarantees, and and then the whole thing becomes a pitch fest so that he can make enough money off the back end from everyone's sales. And then there's that. I, think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Australia, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. 
So there's, I think there's like three players in Australia that do that on that yeah. scale. So yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure I have an idea of who that is. Yes. But yeah, it's it's a headache. But some people love it. Some people love the you know the large event you know vibe, the getting up on you know having the authority to to run these things. It's it's a very powerful position to be in. Yeah. And people you know, attribute a lot of that authority to you just because you're associated with these people. So, you know, and that, that's going to get you connections, you know, it's going to get you great access to the banks if you're looking for loans for real estate. There's just something that this clout opens doors for you. And yeah. I did love that, but it, it didn't outweigh the the negatives in, in my in my case for me. Yeah, well, it doesn't. Yeah, like, you know, I guess certain personalities would be drawn to that, would, would enjoy that, you know, the, the, the adrenaline and all the rest of it. Um, but you know, we're all motivated by different things. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it, I, I guess, you know, to, to work out what, what you get clear on, which, you know, world-class influences travel more time with family cameras, cameras and, 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 <laughs> and getting off the roller coaster, um, yeah. is, uh, is an important thing. I mean, I, I, I had a, a, a similar thing, you know, people, will often say to me, oh, you know, why aren't you more like, you know, this guy that teaches sales? Or, you know, why aren't you more like this guy that's got this huge profile and, you know, massive amounts of followers? And my my, my one sentence answer is, I'm motivated by different things. <laughs> <laughs> and those, th those things tend to revolve around being able to surf as often <laughs> as yeah. I possibly can. There you go. Um, yeah, I, I would reply and say, why, I, I wonder why they aren't more like me. Yeah, like, yeah. Wh wh how many hours do they get out on the waves? How many yeah, tubes yeah. do they catch? How many sunsets did they watch on the beach? And, you know, and how fit are they? You know, that's, yeah. it's, you, you choose your own poison. I mean, yeah. when I say poison, I, I mean that in a very flexible way. But what you choose is not good or bad. It is simply a matter of allocating the hours in your day. Yeah, that's all there is to it. And how much time do you want to spend on a stage? How much time do you want to spend in an airplane? How much time do you want to spend sleeping with the people you you actually enjoy their company and you don't have to put on a show, you don't have to perform, you know, there, there's that's downtime, right? Uptime is when you're you're on it, right? And some people need eight hours of that every day on sales calls, presenting training, and they need zero, you know, downtime where they're just themselves. And that's okay, but it's just time allocation. That's all there is to it in life. That, your whole life, that's all there is. How many hours per day do you want to do what? Yeah, that's it. I yeah, totally in alignment with with that. And and yeah, you know, so much of 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 what you just said. Then you know, it's like you know, how do you want to spend your time? You know, like there's people that you know that you, you see them on social media, and they you know they're forever posting. Um, you know, that stereotypical image of, of, you know, looking outside the plane window and seeing the wing, you know, I, I did that um, because at one point I, I live in Perth um, and, you know, whenever I see those, by the way, and hold that thought about Perth, whenever I see those and they're bragging and I see that they're behind the wing, I'm just like, you're an economy class, dude, yeah. at least upgrade, right? Yeah. But if they're in front of the wing and we see the front of the engine, I'm just like, all right, good job, business yeah. class, maybe. maybe. <laughs> That's what I look for, are you behind or in front of the wing? So, so at, at one point I had 80% of my clients on the East Coast. So not only would I have to spend a day- And you're in Perth, which is just for people just i don't live in australia no what's that trek look like how many hours is Mate, it's 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 like la to new york it's really that far yeah Ooh, that's like yeah. what five hour flight five um, or six hours well depending on where you leave from so if you, so if you fly from perth to brisbane um that can be like four and a half hours if wow. you fly from perth to sydney that can be that that can be four hours if you if you fly uh from perth to melbourne that can be anywhere between three and three and a half hours Wow. So, I think for people that don't live in Australia, it's hard to appreciate the scale of your continent. Yeah, it's huge. It is huge. But there's this, like the middle of all desert, right? Yeah. 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 No, you, you know, it's just, yeah. Yeah, desert. that commute is, is, is rough then. Four hours. Four desert and, hours. and camels. So the, the, it's a day of traveling to get there. Mm -hmm. And then 
and then you obviously do the you know the speaking gig and then you fly home so it's it's a three-day thing to speak for for a day and that got so old so quick and when the pandemic thing happened well my my productivity doubled instantly yeah because because now i can talk to seven clients in a day whereas before I'd be struggling to talk to maybe two or, th- or, or three. So, um, yeah, so the, the whole speaking thing, you know, in as much as, oh, yeah, you know, you can get five, ten grand for a keynote or whatever, it's like, and nah, <laughs> I want to do that. You know, not long ago, um, somebody reached out to me because they saw one of my videos on, on Facebook or something, mm-hmm. and they're like, hey, uh, could you – because you do a keynote for us. I'm just like, well, I don't usually do keynotes. And they're just like, look, it's just half an hour. I'm just like, oh, maybe. I said, is it is it live or is it virtual? And they said, no, you have to be here. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, nah. And they're just like, it's we'll pay you $35,000. I'm just like, okay, I'm listening, right? And then they told me they're in Denmark. I'm just like, no. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to no fly life. to Denmark to do a half hour gig and back for $35,000. Like, I think a couple of years ago, I would have. Mm. But now I'm just like, no, it's it's too disruptive of, yeah. of what I I've got a good thing going, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's it's good. Perspective when changes a lot. It's good when you get to a point where you can, where, you know, where you've got the presence of mind to be able to say say no to that, and then you just create your own rules, which is what you've done, which is brilliant. So, um, so what I, you know, what I wanted to to do, um. I mean, you know, because the, the the conversation so far is 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 fantastic in terms of you know lifestyle and choices and business and and you know making up your own rules. So I think there's value in that most definitely. But in terms of in terms of this you know this ongoing requirement for content, you know, like there are so many people that have got you know big depths of of, of knowledge in their in their chosen area, and and I'm not just talking about influencers or or, you know, or coaches or consultants. I'm also talking about people that run actual businesses, brick and mortar businesses. And, and I am mindful that a, a big percentage of my, of my listeners do have businesses. Um, and they all should really be coming up with, with, with content because, you know, like we, I'm sure yeah. that you'd be familiar with, you know, the challenger sale where half of, of the businesses that were, that were, inter, that were, surveyed in 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 that in that book 5000 businesses said 53% said that they would continue that they would buy to start off with or that they would continue to buy from a company or advocate on that company's behalf i.e. promote them because of the the sales experience and the sales experience was categorized as you know helps me navigate alternatives um, gives me unique perspectives on the market uh, Mm-hmm. It helps me avoid landmines, gives me ongoing advice. Well, all that is content. All of that is education-based marketing. So, yeah. so there, there is this constant need and necessity to, to come up with, with, with content. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, so, so you're helping somebody to come up with content for an entire year in a, in a day. Yeah. I'm curious as to if there's, if there's a particular framework or a particular formula that you that you have found to, to work really well to extract some of that that content that people yeah absolutely get. yeah you know I think that most business owners underestimate how much they actually know that is yeah. interesting to other people and just to give uh, an example there's I was watching this TV show and it was actually an Australian show called Wife Swap have you ever watched that. I have a friend yeah. of mine okay, went so, on it. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Okay. Uh, I just happened to watch this one where there was, uh, this, uh, very, very, uh, let's just say country couple and the husband was a farmer, right? And he, he was a sheep farmer. Yep. And, uh, and then the couple that they, that they swapped with, they were like this influencer couple that were very city slicker urban and the wife was a YouTuber. Mm-hmm. So when she got out there, when it was, you know, the, the way the show goes, it's she gets a turn and he has to do whatever she says. Right. And she says, we're going to make a video. Of, you're going to start a YouTube channel about how to do what you're doing. He's like, that's what, what am I going to talk about? I got nothing like he was so against it. She goes, OK, 
what do you spend? What do you do first thing in the morning? He goes, I milk the cows. And he goes, okay. <laughs> she goes, she goes, I, I will hold this phone and follow you there. And you just talk me through what you're doing and answer the questions that I ask while I'm filming. So then he does that. And that video, how to milk a cow got like 15,000 views in three months. And I actually went and found that video. Like, and that just goes to show like, there's no, and it, it wasn't her channel. It was, he, she started a new channel for him. Him, yeah. And, and uh, when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, if, if, if that's all you know, and it's boring, then of course you're going to think it's not worth making a video about. But I, and I had the same experience recently. I was like, hey, here's the behind the scenes of how I set up my, my home studio or what I do to prepare right for Eiffel Life. Mm -hmm. I do that every single day. And I thought it was not interesting. That one got a whole bunch of traction. People were just like, oh, oh, that's what that is. And that's how that works, right? So the lesson here is you got to have somebody who has the eyes of you know, a kindergartner who is going to be so annoying and keep asking why, 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 why do you do this? How does that work until they're satisfied at that childlike level? And that's how, you know, you've got the right content plan for the top of funnel. When I say top of funnel, that means people who are not problem aware and not solution aware yet. And they're just, uh, sorry, they are problem aware, but they're not solution aware. Yep. And they don't know who you are necessarily. But that content is going to grab their attention. So uh, I hope, uh, you know, if anyone ever feels like they don't have the expertise, if you're running a business, then you have expertise people are willing to pay for, period. If you're running a business that's that's making money, because, you know, there, there are thousands of people, millions who dream of running a business, but haven't started for one of, you know, many reasons. Um, so back to your question, a little, little daisy picking there. There's a... Uh, I have a simple format and I call it Hilda, right? Mm -hmm. And Hilda is, uh, stands for H is for hook. Mm -hmm. I is introduce, introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. L is lead as in lead anticipation. Mm -hmm. D for deliver or dopamine. And then A for ask. And if you look at these five principles or these five stages as let's just say like cue cards when you're like presenting on TV or you have a speech, mm -hmm. if you just write one or two bullet points for each of these, how am I going to hook them in? What's my opening statement that is going to get people to want to commit and continue watching? After you hook them in, how can I introduce myself in such a way that gives some perspective, but as short as possible, like, who am I? What do I do? Right? Mm -hmm lead what's the story you can lead with what's the context you can leave with lead with what's the the thought process you can lead with that's going to set up what you deliver the thing that people actually came for and then once you deliver that there should be dopamine running in their bloodstream at this point yep then you can ask for a micro commitment so a micro commitment is not join my webinar or get into my group or you know sign up for my emails a micro commitment is share this video, hit like, comment below. And we have to make that bottom, that, that first uh, commitment as easy and as smooth and as painless as possible because it's a very, very competitive space out there and you have to make the entryway as slick and as smooth as possible. Yep. And Friction then, uh, yeah, that's it. You get them to do a little something They'll probably watch more because the algorithm will report that, hey, this person is engaging with your content, therefore we'll show more like that. And engagement drives more engagement and it compounds on itself. Look, if we have time, I don't know if we do, but uh, I'd be happy to walk yeah. you through this process once. Yeah, that'd be but, epic. Okay, let's do it. Um, is this, are you gonna show this video as well? Yes. Because I, I could just sketch through some of this stuff, but first of all, Let's, uh, I wasn't planning on this, but uh, this is what we do in our agency is uh, for our clients, so the ones who buy the coaching package once a month, mm -hmm. we map out four uh, of these Hildas, right? Yep. And that's yep. going to be their content plan for that month. Mm -hmm. And then they go and shoot it. Our video editors edit it. And then next month we do the same thing. So then every single week we have what we call pillar content. That's kind of medium or long form content that mm -hmm. uses the Hilda format. And that gets repurposed into the short TikToks and all the, you know, the Instagram reels and stuff like that. Got it. So let's do this. Awesome. 
Well, let's start with John. What's what's a question you get probably more often than anything else? How much follow-up is too much? How much follow-up is too much? Okay. And I'm going to make yeah, that the people hook is, here. People, have, people are scared of being seen as pushy, but they don't realize how people buy and okay. they don't realize that a lot of people are just preoccupied with other stuff. Um, and they are actually are interested in buying, but okay, okay. Let let me unpack this piece by piece, okay? Yeah, cool. Uh, so let's use that as the hook because uh, if this question is being asked to you a lot, how much follow up is too much? There's a good chance that your your ideal prospect, your customer, mm -hmm. or or your uh, your client is going to be asking this question. Now, I'm going to go to the deliver to the thing we're actually going to teach here, mm -hmm. and. What, what do you want people to learn as a result? Like the answer can be very simple, but what do they actually, what's the lesson they need to learn with if they're asking this question? That they, that there is a way to, to follow up with someone where they won't feel like you're annoying. Okay. So tell me if we take this way, whether it's a system or a process, could you break it down into like, two or three steps. A lot of people who listen to the podcast want to know what we do over at Master Dealmaker Secrets. And effectively what we do is we work with sales professionals and business owners all over the world who are seeing massive increases in their top line sales revenue. So we help business owners and sales professionals to effectively focus on the three key drivers to growing sales revenue in your business. The first one is controlling the message that you send out into the marketplace so that potential clients see and hear and read what you do as an opportunity as opposed to your competitors. The second thing that we do is we help you to create a direct path to the 20% of your ideal clients that will deliver 80% of the revenue. So everyone knows the 80-20 rule. We help you to de develop a direct path to the 20% of the people that are gonna give you 80% of your sales revenue in your business. And the third thing that we, that we allow you to do that we create a process for is for you to be able to double the amount of leads that you get that convert into paying clients. So if this is of interest, we do have an application only process to become involved in, in this particular program. And to, to get to there, all you need to do is, is to go to www.johnblakescall.com. So it's J-O-H-N-B-L-A-K-E-S-C-A-L-L.com. And there's a couple of questions to answer there. And then what you'll do is, is get on a, a quick conversation with me and I can find out a little bit more about what you've got going on in your business and see potentially whether what you are doing would be a fit for what we could help you with. And at that point, I can extend an invitation if it's a fit and uh, you can make the choice to come on board or not. So uh, that, that's the opportunity. That would be the next step if you're looking at how you can take things to the next level. If you're enjoying what you're hearing on the podcast, if you're getting value from it, uh, I invite you to do that and uh, I will look forward to talking to you. The website is www.johnblakescall.com. Talk to you soon. Is that possible? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, in, in order to follow up on someone in a non-annoying way, what's yep. the first thing you got to do? Uh, you've got to have the, you, you've got to have a, a way of communicating with them that is proactive but low pressure okay communicate proactively and low pressure yep active and low. okay and so let's say we have that nailed we have this way to mm -hmm. communicate uh proactively and with low pressure what do we do once we master that once you once you have this communication cadence it's proactive there's very low pressure what else do we need we need to like timing's really important. So we need, to know, we, we need to know when, when to, when to communicate. So when to effectively, when to call and when to use written communication. 
and we okay. need and, and there needs like you say to be a cadence so um you know it can't be too frequent but it needs to be consistent enough to be able to get a get a result okay so how about we we change we have communication uh, proactive we have timing let's mm -hmm. make the other one uh channels right yeah, if, if the channel is going to be we have uh dms right yep. we have email yep. right we have phone and we have video conference right yep all right does that about cover it yep okay and so if they communicate if they if they uh master proactive and low pressure mm -hmm. they got the timing they know when and when not to and how often mm -hmm. they got the channels you think they that's about i mean i know these are pretty big topics but if they master these three things you think yep. that's about it or do you think that there's something else um the fourth one is like the is like the hail mary so it's like what's a, that show up at the door and knock no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my hail mary like no, it's I, not I, working I, I i call it the gone dark email so that's the okay. one that, that that's the one that you use when you get absolutely no response um at all from the previous three okay so let's leave that as a as a secret. Like we're yeah, not. That's gonna... like the that's like the silver bullet that you use when when you when you're done. <laughs> okay. Now, John, I know that you work with with business owners, right? Mm -hmm. Can you, without naming them, could you think of somebody who really improved their communication skills th using these four methods? Mm -hmm. Just okay. I'm going to ask you some lightning round questions. Is it a man or woman? Sure. Uh, it was a man. Man. Okay. Age, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s? Uh, 30s. 30s. Okay. And what's his occupation? Uh, he owns business. business. What, what type of business? A manufacturing business. Manufacturing business. Okay. And is he married? Yes. Kids? Yes. You know how many? Two. Two kids. Okay. And... Could you think about something about him that makes him stand out? Is he tall and skinny? Does he wear Coke bottle glasses? Does he have an interesting accent, a long hair? Anything about him that's going to give him a bit of, you know, stand, stand out? Uh, he lives in a town in the Wheat Belt um, that has a population of 600 people. Ah. Town 600 population okay cool now this person when they first came to you mm -hmm. what was the we're going to paint it like a before and after kind of picture all right what was his biggest frustration the, the thing that he wanted help with the most uh, because he probably came he to you was, for a solution right yeah but he was he was doing great with lead gen so he had you know he was he was not certainly starved for leads at all but he was not good at converting them into into actual paying clients okay and how was that affecting his business his cost per lead was quite high and okay. they were they were missing big big opportunities in their monthly sales figures because they were they weren't converting the number of opportunities into paying clients that they sh that they should have been okay how was this affecting his personal life his wife his two kids um if if it was not notable then you don't we don't need to make anything up yeah it, look there's there's nothing that okay i mean he he knew that he knew that he could do better and he and he had tried to to do better he actually he'd actually seen me speak at a conference Mm -hmm. and had and had tried to implement what i taught okay himself but it but they they hadn't done a very good job okay of, of so let's just say tried to diy and failed right yep yep okay so that's the before picture now he's that he's worked with you mm -hmm. uh he went from having good lead gen but bad conversion rates how would mm -hmm. you describe that situation now fixed <laughs> Okay, so we just say good lead gen and great conversion. Yeah, definitely. Do you know what is roughly what his conversion number used to be? Yeah, it was about twenty or thirty percent, um, and then it went up to fifty with some guys converting eighty percent. 
So 50 to 80, that's a huge conversion. Yep. Okay. And let's say that uh, his CPA was too high. He was missing targets. How's that looking right now? Oh, they've, they, they, they are doing so well that they ended up um, shifting from having, so I'm sure you're, you're uh, familiar with the theory of constraints. They went mm -hmm. from having a lead conversion problem to having a production problem. <laughs> ah, so would you say no, that the they new problem they, is... They can't keep up. <laughs> ah, new problem is too many sales. Yeah, too many sales and they, they can't make enough. I think they've, they've that, that was a while ago, they've, I think they've been able to make, make some inroads and, and, and change their production up um, since then. But yeah, the, the immediate problem was shifted from not enough sales to um, too many sales and they can't make enough, too much stuff on back order. I didn't think they had okay. 5 million bucks worth of product on back order. Okay. Now the last one, he tried to DIY it and he failed. How about now? What's that? What's your relationship with him? Uh, well, he, he's got, he's got the systems in place. He's still, and is this something you did for him? Like a deep yeah, done I, with I, you I, or done for you? Yeah. Well, I, I did with him um, okay. over, over about, about 12 to 18 months. Resulted. Yep. In systems. Would you say full systems integration? Would that be accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, really just opt optimized what are your, you know, a lot of what he already had, but but put okay. a lot of put a lot of the written and verbal communication in place. Okay. Communication systems. Okay. Yep. So we're we're putting some 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 meat on these bones here. Now, mm -hmm. in your case, when you let's let's work on an introduction for you, right? Sure. And my framework for this is is really simple. Mm -hmm. First name plus who you help and how or your title and your company or something you're known for. In my case, I say, hey, my name is Ken. I help uh, businesses to get leads and sales with video. Or I'd say, hey, my name is Ken. Uh, I'm CEO of Oz Media Global. Third one would be, hey, my name is Ken, author of the seven figure video funnel. So it's, one of them is like building authority. One of them is just a job title. And the third one is a little who you help and how. In your case, my name is John. And mm -hmm. what would be what would you tack on to that? I would say I help business owners to maximize the number of inquiries that they get into paying clients. Okay. That's too long. Okay. <laughs> how, how can we shorten that up? Uh, help business owners to maximize sales in their business or optimize sales in their business. I'm not sure what the better word is. Okay, let's just say maximize sales. Yeah. And we don't have to say in their business because that would be kind of redundant, wouldn't it? Because we already said they're a business owner. That's fair. <laughs> Help business owners to maximize sales. Yeah. Now, what's what's typical for your, for your client base? Let's say they work with you for 18 months, right? Mm -hmm. From the entry level to when they exit, like this, this last guy we talked about, he like doubled his conversion, right? Yep. What's... But is that typical or is that like an outlier? No, that would be typical. Okay. So should we say to 200% 200 your sales? Yeah. Okay. To uh, boost conversions, 200%. Yep. Yeah. That sounds exciting. Mm. Taking the same thing and just changing the words here. Now, yeah. um, this gone dark message that we talked about, yep. is that something that, uh, that you teach in like, let's say like a, a private group or in a paid membership area? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to make this up here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if you decide to, in the end, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, let's just see, uh, four stuff. Okay. So I'm going to run through this here as mm -hmm. you now, if, if John Blake was an Asian, uh, looking guy, then this is what he might, well, what, what his content might look like now. <laughs> uh, I'm literally just going to read through this and just kind of put it into, uh, into prose, like a, a conversational format. Sure. Not sorry, not conversational, uh, just regular speaking. And this is what my clients do. We literally give them like five things with bullet points. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, let me start in three, two, one. 
How much follow-up is too much? Now, if you're a business owner, you're probably afraid that by over-communicating, you're going to scare away your customers. But you're asking the wrong question. The correct question is, how can I communicate in such a way that they're going to want to buy from me? So let me walk you through this. But before I do, quick introduction. My name is John. I help business owners to boost their sales conversion by 200% or more. Now, if you want to hear how this works, let me explain it in story format. So I recently worked with a man and he's in his 30s. He's in a manufacturing business. He's got two beautiful children and a beautiful wife, but he had one problem. So he lives in this tiny town in the middle of nowhere. And in his manufacturing business, he told me that he was having great lead gen, which people would say that's wonderful. But his problem was his conversions really sucked, to be honest. And he was only converting about 20 to 30 percent of the people who were qualified leads. Yet, for some reason, they weren't buying. He also told me that his CPA, the cost per acquisition, the amount he was spending on ads was way too high, causing him to miss his profit targets. And we actually met at a conference and he took what I had taught and he thought this makes sense. But when he went home to try to implement it, it actually failed simply because he had a hard time implementing it all by himself. Now, what I'm about to share with you is exactly what he did. And these are four simple principles that when you master, and this won't happen overnight, but when you master, you may get results just like him. And I'm going to share what these four things are in just a second. So after working with him and uh, helping him one-on-one -on -one in his business, his conversions went from the previous 20 to 30% to 50 to 80%, which is a huge difference and pretty much doubled his business. And his problem before was that his cost per acquisition, acquisition was too high. The problem is we solved that problem too well. And his next problem became that he was not able to keep up with the orders. And now he is getting sorted that, he is sorting that out, but it's a much better problem to have than not enough sales. Now, I told you before that he tried to implement all this by himself, but what's happening now is we helped him implement it for him. His team is trained on it. Everybody knows how and when to communicate in order to get the sales and hit those targets. So you're probably wondering right now, what are these four things? So I'm going to share that with you right now, but I want you to take some notes because this is something that I had to develop over time. A lot of trial and error, many years of running my own business, testing this to make sure it works where I feel right now I have enough authority and experience to teach it to other people. So write this down. Number one, you want to communicate in a way that's always proactive, not reactive, and low pressure. It is no longer the 80s or even the 60s style selling that you see in the movies. This is 2022. Nobody wants to be, you know, have their arm twisted by a salesperson and everybody can see when it's coming. And now it's as simple as just clicking off. You don't even have to slam the door in their face. So you have to know what is the right way to do it proactively and also the right words to use so that they never feel pressured. Number two, timing, when to communicate. It's not how often actually, it's when and when not to. And when you understand the cadence, which is gonna be different in every business and in every industry, then you will master this, the art of timing. Now, the third one is master your channels. When and to whom should you be DMing? When and to whom should you be emailing? When and to whom should you be making a phone call? And when and to whom should you get on a video conference call? There is a time and a place in the process that these all play a role as the primary means of communication. If you get these mixed up, you will piss people off and you'll probably never see them again. Now, here's the last one. A lot of times in a sales conversation, things have gone dark, meaning that they stop responding. They're, they're ghosting you. And this happens even to the best of us. But I put together a script that if you ever have a situation where things have gone dark and you wanna turn this conversation around right quick, then you wanna use the script. But here's the thing, I don't want you to just grab this and write this down. I want you to actually come inside of my group. So I've got a free group here. And if you get inside of there, the script is for free. This is the Gone Dark Hail Mary script that works every single time. So if you want to get a hold of that, just click the link below, jump inside the group. It's 100% free. And we're going to go over a lot more detail on communication and optimization skills, and you're going to get this script absolutely free. That's on me. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you again next time. Man, that was brilliant. John, does that make sense? <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> I get the impression that you might have done that at least three or 400 times. <laughs> Probably more. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what's great is this all 100% your words, right? And yeah, I just ask exactly. questions. Yep. 
and you gave one word answers pretty much and we just put it into a format yeah. and we it's your content your experience your stories put into a structure that quite frankly works really well yep and and for for everyone who is listening you can go through and and create that for really anything that you you know any product that you might be selling or any particular part of of your business you could go through and you could answer those questions as Ken asked them and you could go through and create the exact same framework for for your particular product or service so um I was, and just for the uh, audience, I, I was you know. certainly I was certainly not expecting that, but um, I was very <laughs> pleasantly surprised. So thank you. And we didn't rehearse thank this, right? Like no, there we, was we there was totally no rehearsal did. going on. We totally and, did. So thank you. Yeah, and also yeah. depending on what people say, there's there's a lot of ways you could go about it. Like, and I think for the listeners, the most important thing is to spend a lot of time on the hook. Yep. I just uh, I'm auditing a lot of uh, big celebrities. Uh, when I say celebrities, um, like business owners type celebrities, mm -hmm. their TikTok, uh, their YouTube, their Instagram, and I'm looking for what's the biggest, uh, you know, make or break factor in the videos. And it's almost always the hook. Yep. Is that initial statement you make succinct? Does it use simple fifth grade words, no fancy terminology? And is there some connection? to one of two things, money or love. And if you can reference that somehow, then you will get more engagement, you will get more views, and you will get more shared. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's it's just that classic headline, isn't it? It's like it's the headline, it's the email subject line, it's the hook in the video. It's the all the above the yep. first two set, you know, three, three or four seconds that elapses that determines whether they hang around and keep reading or keep listening or keep watching or otherwise. That's it. Awesome. That was fantastic. Thank you, Ken. That was brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have uh, a lot of people actually that my, my clients, what they do is they'll just take the recording and send it to their virtual assistant and say, Hey, can you transcribe this? And then they'll, <laughs> they'll make a few edits and, yep. and then they'll just read it off the teleprompter. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what happens a lot. But yeah, it, it is a lot of fun for me simply because uh, I think that a lot of people are looking through, you know, a dirty lens when they they look at their own business or their experience. And my job is to is to point that camera back in their face and, and polish it up and show them how good it can look if it were just formatted differently. Yeah. There's no embellishment. There's no uh, storytelling. There's no, you know, fake influence. It's well, as, as long as you're telling me the truth when I ask you questions, it's 100% true, just formatted in a way that you know, it looks a lot better than you might have realized. Yeah, really. And I, I love that analogy. You know, it's, it's hard for you to see your own stuff clearly because there's... Because and as a coach, you know the same thing, right? Yeah, exactly. What you see in your clients, they might not see it for themselves. And yep. that's what, my job as a video coach is what I do for people. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I love the, the, the demonstration that speaks so much more succinctly than um you know than a linear explanation of what you do like it's it's that's particularly powerful most definitely so um so content wise the you're doing four of these per month you're chopping it up into bite size chunks and distribu yep. distributing it through all sorts of different media mm -hmm. um so the process for content, you certainly covered that um, extremely well. Uh, what about production value? You know, is that becoming more or, or or less important? Is it, you know, like it seems as if production value is increasing. Um, there are, you know, I, I think some... it depends where you're looking. Yeah. Right. So if you look at YouTube. Yep. then absolutely people are investing a lot more in better cameras, better editing, better sound, better color grading, like everything. And and if you look at like, for example, Mr. Beast, he spends like what, two or $3 million just to make the video on top of the money he's paying inside the videos, right? Yeah. So we're talking and you know, his, he, he, I was listening to a, a podcast he did. Was that the one he with, paced with uh, Rogan? 
Uh, I'm no, not that one. No, but but he, someone asked him, like, how much do you pay for, for, you know, the different things? And one of the things he mentioned that stood out to me is he pays a graphics designer $10,000 per thumbnail on YouTube. That's how much he pays. Because wow. even as simple as they look, yep. it's not the graphics designer's ability to manipulate graphics. It's the graphics designer's ability to get people to pay attention. Yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated, but you have to understand psychology. Now, so that's one side of the spectrum is YouTube. Now, yep. on the other side, we have the TikTok universal format, and I call it universal format because it's even though TikTok is crushing it now, we don't know if it's you know ten years from now it'll still be around, you know, mm -hmm. it, or it might be, it might become the dominant place. Mm -hmm. But what we do know for sure is that the format that they invented which is number one, mobile first, right? Yep. YouTube was built for desktop. It's compatible for mobile. Yep. Instagram was a photo sharing site. Now they made it compatible for mobile. Everything yep. was desktop first. Retrofitted. TikTok is the one that is for mobile and it can be as accessed from your desktop. So that's rule number one, the TikTok universal format. It's, it's, a, it's a mobile first. Number two, it's, um, it's got to be entertaining. It's not educational. It's not DIY stuff or how to's it's entertainment and people are there to be entertained. And if your content is not entertaining, you're done. Right. Number three, there's gotta be this kind of song and dance routine. Now, anybody who's running a business approach is like, I am not going to do a dance in front of the camera. And here's what I say is either you're going to do the song and dance or the content that you're presenting is going to song and dance for you. And that means, great titles that engage the audience. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to move your booty or that, that title is going to move around in such a way that just keeps people engaged and what you're saying has got to be valuable, right? And the length is really only limited by one question. Is it interesting? And if it is interesting, you could go on for half an hour. Yeah, yeah. Right? Actually, the, the limit now on TikTok is 10 minutes, but it's not, this is not a magic number. No. Even though one minute, like right around the 59 second mark is the optimal length from everything I've tested so far. Yep. I've seen outliers where people have a very long video, but they're just really, really interesting all the way throughout. Mm. So, you know, that's, that's what you got to think about. And it's not about converting leads on that sale. I mean, on the, on the video uh, view, it's just about building authority. And when the time comes, people will find you. They yep. know your name, they'll look yep. you up, they'll find you. You, you might not even be able to track it, but they will find you. So, uh, and that's all shot on mobile phones, right? So, yeah. you know, when it comes to production quality, I mean, phones are really, really good. Uh, they, they just got so good that it's, for a lot of people, it's indistinguishable from a $50,000 camera in, in, under certain conditions. But um, I think that the question people should be asking, not you know, about the quality of production level is how can I get better at storytelling? Just like I did with you. How mm. can I get better at using the phone in my pocket and communicating my message in such a way that is both interesting, engaging and, and entertaining instead of how can I buy the camera that's going to make me a superstar? That's the wrong question. You know, what editing software? That's the wrong question. It's, it's get in front of the camera, do a hundred reps, of just making content. And then you're going to see what works and what doesn't. You'll start finding patterns. You'll see what feels natural to you in front of the camera. And if you want to work with a coach, somebody to walk you through that, then, you know, you could certainly reach out to me or, or, uh, you, you could Google it. There's a lot of people who can help you structure content and, and get your video, uh, looking better or working better at least. Yeah. I mean, you've touched on a couple of pretty massive things there, you know, like the, the, I've, I've, I was, you know, I guess like a lot of us, um, was introduced to the beast because my son was watching him. Um, and then I listened to this interview with him and it blew me away. Like he's, I think he said he had, was like 500 employees or something, like some ridiculous amount of people that work for him. And, and that, and he, you know, talked about him, that him buying an island and recreating the whole squid game thing for his own <laughs> purposes and like that guy's making some big bets on on yep. on video content you know mm -hmm. it just it just blew me away the sky and, and like you know he's probably the most influential online personality yeah 
I'd say right after Elon Musk, probably. Yeah. You know, th those guys are neck and neck as far as like how how many eyeballs are, are watching their every move online. Yeah. It's just in incredible. I mean, and what is the guy in his 20s? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just bizarre. Um, and then the other thing that you said, it, it reminds me of, because I've been a longtime student of, of, of copywriting. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not, I don't, I mean, I, I know how to write copy, but I don't consider myself a copywriter. It's one of those things that, you know, you, you end up just doing because you out of necessity, but I always remember, you know, like a long form sales copy. It's like, it, it can't be too long, but it can be too boring. There you go. Like, how, you know, it, who is going to, who's going to read this? Well, the person who's going to read it is the person that's interested in it. So, you know, I, to your point about, you know, uh, how long is too long? It's like, okay, well, optimum is about a minute, but it could be 10 minutes if it was interesting enough. And if the story was being told well enough for, for it to, yeah. to, um, to be longer. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I, I did, and I didn't really explain what I was doing is all the way throughout when you're presenting on video, you want to open up loops and then close them all at the very end, except for a one. And the final loop can only be closed by them taking some kind of action. Right. Sure. So there's this, this is repeating pattern where you open a loop. Hey, I'm going to share this with you. Hey, I'm going to share how this person did this. I'm going to do this. And then you fulfill on every single one so that that final loop that you open, they have this repeated expectation. It will be fulfilled. And therefore they're trained by you in that two to three minute video to take action and close that final loop by joining that group or, or getting on downloading a free thing or clicking the link or whatever. So that that's a pattern that, you know, uh, I did very fluidly, but it took me a while to just be able to to think of these things on the go as 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 it comes. Yeah, it's 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 like that whole you know I'm a I'm I'm about to share this with you in a minute, but before I do that, and and you've opened up a loop. Yeah, you know it's yeah. and and occasionally because I I run live events every now and then. Um, this year not so much, but previous you know at least four or five a year, and the. Every now and then you'll say, oh, you know, there's, there's, there's three, three key things that you need to keep in mind, you know, when you're, when you're doing this. And occasionally, like, you'll talk about the first one and the second one. And, you know, because it's, because it's live and you're, you know, you're, you're in the moment and there's things that, can, that you can get sidetracked on, you won't mention the third thing. Yeah. And then <laughs> someone will go, what's the third thing? Because <laughs> you've opened up that loop and they're expecting it. And then you yeah. don't close that loop and it just, you know, it just sits there and it's like, what is it? What is it? <laughs> so it's the same thing. Yeah. And if you do intentionally, then then that's that will keep people on the edge of their seats. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't, I think the couple of times that I'm thinking of, I didn't do it intentionally, yeah. but, but, um, but yeah, it's incredible how powerful that is. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're, you're... You know, I used to teach, uh, middle school in Thailand. So oh, just, wow. that's a whole nother story. Yeah, I but, bet. Uh, what I do is I would bring, you know, I'm, I'm from Japan, so I'd bring like a Japanese tree and I'm, I'm just like, hey, I, I have this 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 uh, tree, you know, and it looks cute, right? And, I, and I'm going to give it to one special person at the end of the class and I'll leave it on my desk. And I'll teach the whole day. And at the end, everybody's being really good. And, and at the end, the bell rings, nobody's running out. And I'm just like, you know, <laughs> it's like, so who gets the prize? You know, <laughs> I'm like, okay, great. I think you were, you were the winner the, for today. Ken gets the prize for incredible behavior management. <laughs> I, I leave that treat where they could see it the whole time. And they're oh, yeah. salivating the whole time, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that might have been a precursor to, you know, opening up loops and, and giving yeah. people reason to stay. But, you know, with kids, it has to be visual and, and very, very visceral for them to, yeah. to, to, to desire that. Yeah, that's that, that's so powerful because it, it it is it's it's those you're opening up those loops and you're and, and that is effectively the definition of creating interest, you know, provided provided that it's a subject that they're interested in. Absolutely. So um, so yeah, that's that that's particularly powerful. So um, so Ken, like I'm I'm mindful of the time. This has been particularly valuable. I'm I'm so um, I'm so stoked that I that I decided to get you to come on. Um. Is there any particular resource that, that you wanted to recommend that would be a good first step 
with yeah absolutely people. yeah you know with uh what i just showed there hilda um yep. i have a like a 30 minute video that's uh -huh. completely free and yep. that's inside of my free facebook group and there's downloadable worksheets and everything. So if any of your, your listeners are interested to get a more in-depth training around how to do that, yep. uh, I've got a free Facebook group. It's videomarketingcommunity.com. That'll redirect straight to the group. And uh, that's my gift I'd love, love to give to anybody who's, uh, who's listening and, and wants to take their video a little further. Awesome. I'm actually in that group and it's it's there's there's lots of, incredible content in there so yeah i can certainly recommend that people go ahead and do that and uh I'll, I'll put that link in the in the notes for this particular episode um and for people who might want to get in contact with you sooner than that is there a is there a preferred method that you would suggest that people use um you know i think reaching me via facebook messenger is is probably the fastest way um yeah. If you, if people prefer email, uh, feel free to reach out to me. At, I don't know. Should I give my email here? <laughs> Am I going to get too much spam? <laughs> totally up to you. But Facebook's uh, probably easier. Yeah, easiest because yeah. most people are on it. So you know, what? go ahead and write to me. Yes, I'll take. Uh, I'll take uh, emails. Uh, Ken at yep. Oz Media. That's O Z or Z for you know, Aussies. Yep. Uh, media M E D I A dot global G L O B A L. So that's Ken at ozmedia.global. And that's my personal inbox. And I will read all the messages that come in. Awesome. Unreal. Well, look, thanks so much again for, for being on with us today. I'm, I think this is going to be super valuable and I've, I've really enjoyed our chat. So, um, yeah, thanks once more, Ken. I really very, very John, much. thanks so much for having me. I enjoyed hanging out with you and I'm glad we finally connected for this. Yeah. It's, been, it's been a blast. My pleasure. You've been listening to Master Dealmaker Secrets with John Blake. Subscribe to get more in-depth strategies and maximize your sales process with new episodes every other week. And double your inquiry to sale conversion with the lead flow you already have. Go to johnblakeaudio.com for his exclusive, free, no-fluff audio training and companion PDF guide.